Hello, I'm Ellie for Edu4Java and this is Swing Tutorial number 5. In this tutorial, we're going to see what an anonymous inner class is. Why are they important? Because we use them a lot. It's a way to say writing a lot of code. The disadvantage is that until we understand it, it is a bit complicated. Let's begin where we left it in the last tutorial. We had created a listener yeah, which was the object that listened to the button when we clicked on it. A listener is an object which listens for an event. This object associates to a component in this case, a button which is going to generate the event, in this case, a click. Here, for example, we create an object called new my button listener, which is going to listen to the actions, taken over login button, and register button. We had said that my button listener has to implement the action listener interface. As we implement an interface, we have to implement the methods of that interface. In this case, action before, which is the method which is going to be called by the button when it's clicked. Another way of writing this, the most common way of doing so in Java, is this. I add to the button an action listener, and instead of having another different class, with this simple instruction, I create a listener object which implements action listener. And what action listener does is what we write here in between the brackets. Basically, what I had written before in another class is now inside the creation of the same object. If you notice, the class I'm writing here hasn't got a name. If we go to the code of the example, the class is called my button listener. In this case, we don't have a name. What we do here is a new of an interface. This doesn't have a lot of sense, really. What we're doing is creating an object which will implement this interface. Let's show you how to do this and how does Eclipse help us. Let's create a new package. Let's call it 5, finish. We copy the class login view to. And we rename it with shift alt r. Let's call it login view 3. Yeah, we open it and we can see an error. Instead of creating a new class, my button listener, we create a new action listener. We ask for help for Eclipse. Here you can see the action listener. We click on it and Eclipse generates all this code, which is the method that has to implement action listen. So now what we have to do is write the code we have inside the method in my button listener. Here we are, Ctrl S, and you can see we don't have an error anymore. What I'm doing here is creating a new my button listener in just one instruction. I define the class and I create the object. If we execute the program, we can see that it works just as before. We could make this code even shorter. We don't have to create a new my button listener in this line. We could just do a new Directly here, new action listener, ask for help, and as before, put our code inside. We execute this code, 
and we can see that everything works as before. The great advantage of this is that we don't have to write another class and when we work with a, a, user, a user interface we normally have a lot of listeners which are only used for one button, just once. So with this we save a lot in code, in files. We also use this type of construction when we want to create threads for example. Okay, for this tutorial is enough. See you in the next one. Bye.